Hi all, welcome to lecture of inheritance in C-Sharp from .NET School. Now in this lecture, we will understand a very important concept in C-Sharp and object-oriented programming language, inheritance. Now what is inheritance? Inheritance is all about relationship between classes. A class can inherit from another class to extend or customize the original class. By using this concept in C-Sharp, we can use the functionality in that class instead of building the class from scratch. Now this is the syntax for using inheritance in C-Sharp and we can make uh, a class inherit from another class by using colon symbol. Now a derived class inheritance inherits from base class and the members in the base class becomes part of derived class. So the class from which a class inherits is derived uh, is base class or parent class and the derived class is also called as child class. So let's look through an example and try to understand these points. Now since we work for IT company and or we aspire to go through a IT company, uh, let's make an application that simulates a IT environment. So in a, an IT environment, we have something called employees. So let's make a class called employee. And it has two properties. One is EMP ID and the other one is sorry control x control v tap tap okay string name so every employee will have a employee id and name and each and every employee when he visits he or she visits the organization he swipes in so that will have a method called swipe in and let's simulate that method console dot right line I am swiping in so this is a very simple employee class for our organization now in an organization, there are very many specialized employees. Say, suppose there are developers, there are testers, there are watchmen, there are managers, there are many employees. So let's make three of those employees here. So those are some specialized type of employees. So let's make a developer class because developer is also a member of that organization. So let's copy and paste that class and make it developer now a developer will also have employee id and name he will swipe in each and every day also he develops the code daily let's copy this rather develop code I am developing so this is a developer class now you can see there are many uh, two properties and one method that is being repeated in this class now each employee of the organization will have employee ID and one name and he will always swipe in the same goes for developer he will always swipe in and he will have a employee ID and name so rather than coding these things again and again we can reuse this employee class so all we can do is remove this code from here and make it inherit from employee class. So now developer class will inherit the employee ID name and swipe in method from employee class. You can understand this. It's uh, basically it's a specialization and generalization relationship. Now employee is a very generalized form of employee which represent any employee of the organization and developer is a specialized form of employee that only develops the coding part that handles the coding part of the organization. So this is generalization and this is specialization. And this is also asked in many of the interviews that what do you mean by special, specialization and generalization. So you can give uh, a inheritance example and tell that employee is a generalized class and developer is a specialized class now there are many more employees such as managers 
our personal favorite managers so let's make manager class 2 manager and all he do is create no offense to all the managers who are watching this video but create proposals so I am creating proposals proposals okay this space okay so this is a manager class now this is also a specialized form of employee class and that is creating proposals that has employee id that has name and that is swipe in so this swipe in method is common for both developer and manager employee id and name is common for both manager and developer similarly we can have a tester class so let's copy this let's paste this and let's make this sorry test and he does his test apps i am testing so now let's go to our program class and in the main method let's bring this simulation environment to life by creating objects so let's make a object of employee class emp obj or let's say just obj so that we can paste it for any object is equal to new employee obj dot see what what all things are available for employee object a employee has a common employee has employee id a name and swipe in so any employee that comes to the organization will have an employee id a name and he will always swipe in similarly i can go for a manager object now mr manager has come to life so that mr manager has create proposals employee id name and swipe in he swipes in and he creates the proposals here comes the developer since i am a developer my obvious inclination is towards developer so he has means i develop code i employ i have an employee id my i have a name and all i always swipe in same thing goes for tester employee id name swipe in and test apps so i guess uh, it's very clear now what is inheritance all we have done is taken the common code and reused it in each and every classes manager developer and tester so that's the use of inheritance in Cisha. now a very common interview question is uh, but, uh, the relationship between base class and child class or derived class say suppose i i am creating a employee object uh, employee obj is equal to new employee so this this is correct right this is a object of employee class now since this is the base class it can point to any of the child class and that's very important point so this employee object is the base class of manager developer and tester so this employee could be manager so any employee could be manager it is always correct it is it can point to developer too this employee object is a developer this employee object is a tester however reverse is not true manager is not means that's uh, uh, let's try to phrase it correctly because it's wrong to say manager is not an employee but each manager object is not an employee that means ki every employee cannot be manager a employee is a generalized class so each and every employee will not be a manager so you can phrase it like this base class reference always can point to child class 
Oh, sorry. Derived class. So this is a very important point. You can always remember this. You, please, uh, if you're watching this, please take a pause and note down this point. Vice versa is not true. So let's make this back to employee class and let's make this developer class. Now let's see if a child class object is pointing towards a parent class object is pointed towards uh, child class. So what are the methods and properties those are available to it? Object dot, it has employee ID, it has name, it has swipe in. So this object however will not have developers develop code method it will always have only the employees properties and method because this is employee reference not a developer reference okay so it's slightly confusing but if you practice it will uh, you can grasp the concept yes a base class reference always points to derived class and vice versa is not true so you need to remember this thing so now let's move to our slides back. Now this is the first slide. So now, now this is a very important concept. Now if two or more classes follow the inheritance hierarchy then their constructor also take part in inheritance. A subclass must declare its own constructors. The base class constructor are accessible to the derived class but are never automatically inherited and this is a very important point. Let's understand what I mean by this point through an example. Now, all I have done in this class is I have added a constructor here that, that states I am fired from constructor. Now constructor are special methods that, that those are fired automatically and those are used for the initialization purpose. And uh, rest of the class is same. And uh, if um, it's getting confusing, let me remove the manager class and let me remove the tester class since you have understood the concept of inheritance. So I have removed manager class and I have removed the tester class. Now all I have is a employee class with a constructor and a developer class with no constructor. That's it. Now as our theory states that derived class uh, does not inherit the base class constructors. We need to define a one for developer class two. This devel developer class will not inherit this employee constructor. So that means we need to define a constructor for developer class. How do we do, do that? I am developers constructor. Okay. Okay. Let's first see that if we don't have this constructor, what will happen? Let's try to run this. You can see I am fired from default constructor. That means if you do not define a constructor in developer class, the default parameterless constructor will be provided by .NET framework and this will indeed call this employees constructor so i have a employee constructor in here which says i am fired from constructor or rather let's say i'm fired from default constructor and let's try to run this applic application by creating this object of developer class you can see i am fired from default constructor that means this object first calls the constructor of my base class or parent class now say suppose i have a overloaded version of this employee constructor so let me uncomment the overloaded version of this employee constructor so all this constructor does is takes a parameter of integer type and then this parameter initializes the employee id field and it says i am fired from overloaded constructor and now let's try to run this application you can see it's still calling the default constructor of employee class that is 
the first constructor it's not calling this constructor and why is that because we have we do not have a overloaded constructor in the developer class and by default it's calling the default constructor of employee class so let's have a overloaded version of developer class constructor so let me uncomment this constructor and you can see this is a overloaded version of developer constructor and it also takes a integer uh, parameter of type integer and all it says is i am a developer's constructor okay now the moment i have this constructor i cannot pass a parameterless constructor in the developer object so i need to pass some parameter so let me pass a employee id and then let's try to run this application you can see i am fired from default constructor and i am developer's constructor the moment i have a developer's constructor i am able to call this constructor and this constructor so what are the takeaway points from this exercise is that that is the base class constructor always fires first so you can see i am just calling this developers constructor and this in turn is calling this employee constructor so let me try to run this and see i am a developers constructor it's been called because we are calling this constructor and this i am fired from default constructor it's been called automatically that means base class constructors always fire first now what about this constructor this employee overloaded constructor how can we call this constructor now you can see i am uh, this this constructor is called by default i am uh, this uh, this constructor is co uh, called by default then how can i call this constructor from my child class this could be called with the help of base keyword in the child class constructor so i can have like this i can use a base keyword and you can see it's asking me a parameter of type x so let me pass x and then let's try to run this application so you can see it is now calling the overloaded version of employee constructor i am fired from overloaded constructor and it's also calling i am developer constructor because i am calling it through object of developer so i hope this makes you understand what's the role of base keyword so summarizing the above, above points say suppose i will make a developer's object this developer object will by default call this default constructor of employee and if i need to need to call the overloaded version of this employee constructor i will use base keyword so let's sum that up so let me have this point we can call the overloaded constructor of base class by using base keyword so let's move back to our slides so you can see the third point subclass must hence redefine any constructor it wants to expose in doing so however it can call any of the base class constructor with the base keyword and that we have seen in our example also the base class constructors always execute first so that's it guys that's for this video this was a rather important concept of inheritance in c sharp and inheritance is used each and everywhere in c sharp if you are trying to develop an application you need to know what is inheritance in c sharp so i hope uh, you have understood this video and you have enjoyed this video if you have any doubt please leave a comment and please do subscribe to my channel thank you so very much